celebrate Hanukkah, Mazel Tov, and <laughs> what else? Happy non-specific, <laughs> happy non-specific winter-based <laughs> holiday, everyone. We're depressed. Let's talk about some horror. <laughs> of Merry Christmas, and today we decided to begin the festivities with a particularly cheery little film. So if you want to hear me and Sparky's ho 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 jolly ha 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 thoughts on a wonderful little film called Silent Night, we'll pull up your cocoa and get cozy, kitties. I put your Christmas sweater on, it's got to be done. Okay, so Silent Night. This is a movie I've seen before. It was my, it was an honorable mention for my top ten last year. Uh, I quite like this film. You had never, it didn't get to get a chance to see it though last year. No, and I am really sorry. And I can tell you this, guys. I fucking adored this film. And had I seen it last year, it would, it wouldn't have been an honorable mention. It would have made my list proper and probably pretty damn high. Yeah, no, this is a really damn good movie that we can't talk much about without giving something away so I'll have to be vague early on. Yeah, this is going to be one of those videos. We are going to talk as much as we can without spoilers, but then we're just going to have to hit a point in the video where we'll warn you guys first. What we can say without non-spoilers is this movie is poignant. This movie is beautiful. This is a movie, and I'm not being funny when I say this, this is a movie like I generally felt like I bought every fucking relationship in this movie. Like it gave me the feels. And not only that, um, there are times when the movie gets incredibly dark and heavy and this is me saying yes this. no like a warning be a viewer beware uh if you are somebody who's prone to getting the holiday blues mm -hmm. um maybe put this one on the back burner a little bit because i think I, I personally would say it, I don't know about you, I won't speak for you, but I would say this is probably the single darkest Christmas movie ever made. Yes, it, it's definitely one of the... If not, in the top five at least. Yes, and but see, the, the weird thing about this movie is there is some very dark, some very kind of awe moments, but then there's also, like, just when you think it can't get any darker, they will inject some humor, and it's not comedy for comedy's sake. It really, you really need it, and man, do they nail it every time, just when you really, you just when you need that drink to kind of smooth out the edges, the movie does offer a wonderful comic thing, and it's funny. It, and you know me, I'm hard. You're hard comedy. with comedies, but the comedy works really well. And I would say, like, it's fucking darkest gag and it's best gag of the movie comes in right towards the end of the film and I talked about this with the top 10 last year uh, uh, you will never see a scene involving a can of Coca-Cola in the same way like this movie this movie makes a can of Coca-Cola incredibly fucking funny and incredibly fucking dark it really does I wonder how the Coke brothers or brother feels about this movie um but this movie is incredibly smart and one of the things and it took me a while for it to penetrate my dumb little brain but we got to maybe about 30 40 minutes into the movie and I looked at you because Christian had seen it and I was like oh god damn it and it clicked what the movie was trying to say and this is one of those movies where it has a hell of a lot to say and again if you're already kind of down with the holiday blues it's gonna make you maybe even make a little sadder but it also is like god damn how fucking spoiled we are because one of the themes of the movie and I I don't think I'm spoiling anything here, but one of the themes of the movie is complacency and how with some of us and some of the haves are worried about the stupidest problems while there is mass genocide, while there are children going hungry in the world, while we are just being sheep and doing what what the government tells us to, and yet there is horrible, and we just passively go, okay, this is how it is, while there's these horrible tragedies going on in the world, and it's a heavy dose, and the movie comes on, and when it hits you, it hits you like a ton of bricks. And I was like, oh my God. And you think of all the mass genocide going on in the world. You know, the parents having to build, uh, to bury their children. And, and it's all subtext, but it hit me 
really hard. It did. And I was like, oh my God. But it's a Christmas movie. Merry Christmas. <laughs> um, yeah, no, ab ab absolutely. You're absolutely right about that. This movie, this movie yeah, does have quite a bit to say, both on, like like you said, the complacency with, uh, with a lot of things, as well as some other thing. Uh, one thing about this movie is this is a British film. Yes. And this movie specifically has to be a British film because one of the other things it's talking about, which I'll mention in spoilers, but br the British society and British culture, especially of the last 10 or so years, uh, is incredibly per pertinent to one of the things and one of the major things that the movie is tackling and talking about. And it does it without ever even really bringing it up, really. Like, the actual event is never brought up itself. There's just, like little mentions of things here and there as well as something as something in the movie that's sort of that's a clever little uh, name drop of it and that's one thing that's so genius and we're dumb yanks guys and we don't well christian's actually pretty well read i'm not but you still are going to be able to pick up the subtext with the movie even with the movie telling you so little you're going to clue in on some things and go oh, okay this is what we're talking about and we're it's a smorgasbord it is literally a christmas feast what all these very hot button issues that are talking about and again, it kind of makes you a little sad for the world. And you, these characters and the kid, the kid from Jojo Rabbit is yeah, kid fucking from the Jojo amazing. Rabbit is our lead the whole the cast is, and th that's one thing where this really works. And see, I went in completely blind, and I think you guys should do the same if you can. Like I thought this movie was gonna be. I knew some fuckery was happening at a Christmas party. I was assuming like zombies or the party guests were gonna go rabbit. I didn't know we were gonna go where we go. Yeah, no. Uh, the, yeah, exactly. Uh, all you need to know, this movie is about a group of people, a found family of sort of, they all were like college friends and stuff. Now they're a lot older. They have their own lives, their own Kids. partners. Some of them even have children. Uh, all meeting together at one of the family, our main family's big mansion uh, for Christmas Eve. And some horror thing is going on around it. But they're all just there to, uh, to celebrate Christmas together. That's all you need to know going into the movie. And it handles itself very well in that. Way. It does, and we'll talk about it more in spoilers. But I like, but really, what we'll talk about this deeper in spoilers. But what else can they do? And depending on what kind of person you are, you're probably going to have a lot of opinions on what choices they make, what choices you would make, especially if you're a parent. Mm -hmm. I mean, oh my god! But again, but Jen, this is a Christmas but movie. Jen, this Christmas. Is a, you said this was darkly funny. Yes. Yes, it is. There's so many really good gags like this. Like, we, granted, comedy subjective, of course, but we love dark comedies, especially. Yeah. Like, you know, that's why I love We Need to Do Something so much. That movie clicked, and if it wasn't for that movie, this would have been the best black comedy of 2021, but We Need to Do Something came out. Um, but, no, like, the co the comedy in this movie, I think, really lands really well, and it's never forced. No. It's never, like, it put in there because it feels like we needed to have a joke. It's put in there because that's just the situation playing out. There are, and you're viewing it... it from like the third perspective of the audience view of uh, viewing the uh, viewing all this happening in situation it's not particularly funny but with the th with the audience from the audience's perspective it's really goddamn hilarious to watch all of these fucking idiots go around and the, uh, the events unfold yes and you're getting a fly eye view and it, it's like holding up a mirror to all of us we're all dumb idiots just running around chasing our own tails and again what would you do in this situation but we're still uniquely human and there's some things things that are said that, you know, are very relatable, and that's what works about this movie, is it is so relatable. The human relationships, the choices you make, how people are people are people. That Everything about this film is just so genius, and it never fucking fam fists anything. It never force-feeds you. You're just going along for the ride, and then when the, when, the, when, the, when the curtain is revealed, you're like, oh, fuck me. And another thing I really like is how subtle this movie is. Like, it makes you care about the characters there is a scene with a grandmother and you only get maybe like seven ten minutes with her not at max. even that like three or four and, and the scene with her is so fucking like i got the feels and i think everybody will and i never had a grandmother on either side i never mm. knew my grandparents right but this was such a total scene and you bought even though you didn't spend much time with the actress you bought that she really loves her family and how everyone is reacting during the call it's just like it's so human and so relatable and it's just fucking amazing. The performances in this movie is what it relies on entirely. Like the 
performances in the writing. Um, and everyone does a phenomenal job. And there's a lot of really good actors, not just the act kid from Jojo Rabbit. Uh, Kira, Knight Kira Knightley's in the in the film as lo along with Sam Goody. So like, there's a lot of and a lot of other character. Johnny, actors. Johnny Depp's daughter is in the movie as well, and she also everyone does a really damn good job in this film. Everyone plays their roles incredibly well. It really does. And like I said, the kid and the lesbian reminded me so. Oh much yeah, so you're gonna be sitting there like God. Damn, you're gonna just naturally be sitting there going on like which characters you, you relate to. Personally, it was the main character as well as the le the fucking blonde lesbian woman that I personally relate to, which makes sense. I get that. Uh, I can see that, but yeah, no, um, I, I, I don't want to jump ahead this far, but I feel like we almost have to. Is there anything you want to mention before we get into spoilers? Oh, can we talk about any pros or cons before we get into spoilers? Is there any cons? I feel like we could probably talk, because I have none. I don't I have none. Have I think this is like, a brilliant... I don't really, honestly. I think most, for the most part, the movie's really damn what, good. Again, I was in my honorable mention list for that year, for last year. I really, really like the film. Go ahead. Um, I don't mean to cut you off, but the only thing I will tell you, and this is not a con, but like I said, the, the holidays are very rough for me. Like, like, Same. like the, the, I, I, the holiday depression for sure and stuff. And every year you try to, and some years are better than others. Um, and this movie is funny, and it is a Christmas movie, but there are going to be some heavy things that lay to you. So if you're kind of prone to that, I'm in a very weird headspace because uh, the movie made me laugh. I fucking adored it, but it's also a downer. And uh, while it's a movie, I definitely am going to rewatch. I can't say it's a movie that I'll watch every single Christmas, oh, no. depending on my state. No. And I sound like such a baby saying it, that. No, but. you're right, though. It was interesting because, um, like, uh, it was interesting because this was my second viewing of the film. This was the first time I've watched it around Christmas time. When I watched it last year, it was like after Christmas, it was like in towards the very end of December. It was one of the very last films I watched before I, we did our end of the year list that year. It was like December 27th or something when I watched the film. So uh, Christmas had kind of already faded at that point. And last Christmas, like, for those of you who are here, yeah, last Christmas, y'all know it was not that particularly great. We had, we planned to do 12 days. We got two days in and both of us had a fucking complete and utter mental breakdown of, uh, and depression sp uh, spurts. That's uh, why we're doing them early this year. That's why we're filming this video in November. <laughs> Um, so, so hopefully you will be seeing this and there will not be much like last year. There won't be like, here's two videos and then we're going to hint at the videos that we're going to do later on in the week. And none of them fucking uh, manifest. Hopefully everything will be filmed by the time you're seeing this video drop. We're playing the YouTube game smart this yes. year. <laughs> yes. Um, but it was interesting getting to see this film over closer to Christmas when it's a lot more omnipresent and in your mind. It was very interesting to see it. Like, it it genuinely does have like a lot it feels like that premise alone it really does feel like a fucking Hallmark movie premise it does. of like oh these 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 group of friends so, like college friends who this found family you know meeting together with love you know, and forgiveness and they, yeah with love and forgiveness they're gonna band together and you know work all of their issues out that's the fucking premise of a Hallmark movie mm -hmm. and then the movie just pulls the rug out from under you and it does it really damn well no I don't really have any cons like you said though if you're prone to the holiday blues or, or a spouse of depression, put this on the back burner for a while. Like I said, I saw this film last year after Christmas and I still really had a good time with it. So if you need some time for it, totally understandable, put it on the back burner. But however, with that being said, totally agree with that, but I can also say this movie can really make you appreciate like, like you might be down, but this movie might make you think like, okay, well I'm sitting here worrying about really stupid material things or things like that while there are other people in the world that are dealing with things that are uncomprehendable to like, you know, unspoiled yeah, yeah. spoiled people in other parts of the world so in a way, I, like it could totally do one way, but it also could go okay, maybe my life has Much some issues much like a like a proper Christmas story, like yeah. it gives you much more appreciative about what you have in life. Yeah, and what you're gonna do with it? Are you gonna mindlessly party? Or are you gonna try to help and hold somebody's hand? Yeah. And you'll understand more when we talk spoilers. But they, it might put you in that perspective. And again, this is me, and I sound fucking cheesy, but this is how this movie really put me in this perspective. Because it's like I could do more to help my fellow man. I want to be a better. This movie made me think. You know what? Sometimes oh, we're all guilty of being sheep. I'm not. A, I'm not a fucking saint. But by any fu I'm a fucking degenerate. I'm a pervert. You people know this. Maybe it's even why you like me. But I. But it didn't have me thinking. You know what? I can do better as a person. Yeah, and yeah. that sounds maybe a little like bullshit. But I was really sitting here thinking as a movie, like I want to be there and maybe have, hold somebody's hand that's going through a hard time and maybe make it just a little less shitty. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So that and 
that's credit to this movie. Absolutely. So what we're saying is very strong positive for me. Just know what how the mood you're in when you're watching it. Be in a specific mood, but totally strong positive. Totally check this film out. Yeah, this is an A plus for me. This would have definitely made it on my best year. Um, I think this this movie is amazing. I also love the fact that not only Jojo Rabbit, but the, there's two other uh, little boys in it, and they're all brothers. Yeah, and they're, they're all, so adorable. Yeah, the three boys in the movie are all brothers, and also the children of the director slash writer. Which is but we'll talk about which that. Which is funny considering some stuff. But yes, uh, which we'll talk about here because uh, with that... I think you guys, if you haven't seen the movie, we strongly recommend it. It's a fun ride going in completely blind. So if you have not seen Silent Night, you better turn back now because we're about to hit... Ho, ho, ho! Spoilers! Spoilers! <laughs> Okay, so I think we can just rip the fucking bandaid off again. Turn around if you haven't seen the fucking movie. So, the apocalypse is happening. Yay! An environmental apocalypse is happening. Um, the because... planet is pissed off. Much like the happening, yep. uh, the planet is pissed off and killing us for uh, treating it shittily. It is, and again, this is so. This is something that could really happen because how many people have been sounding the alarm bell? And probably one day, some people might actually have oh, to go has... through something oh, like this. Really will be the... I'm probably fucking... gonna be fine. I'll probably be dead before it gets really bad. But you and Jake are you yeah. and Jake's kids. Yeah. No. <laughs> It's, it, yeah, no, yeah, you're absolutely right about that. Like, this movie, like, one thing I want to mention is there was a movie earlier, uh, I believe towards the end, either the end of 2021 or the beginning of this year that went on to Netflix that Don't Look Up with fucking DiCaprio and everyone, who weirdly really gets name dropped in this movie, weird coincidence. Um, but, like, I think this movie does what that film was trying to do, whereas that film came off incredibly preachy and, and pretentious, pretentious and, like, a bunch of rich fucking celebrities telling the... Uh, Telling down and in, enfranchised in people what they're doing wrong and ignoring the, what the fucking celebrities are doing wrong. Um, this film has it from the polar opposite. This movie is holding a fucking mirror yes. and a shotgun up to the rich, the wealthy, and the governments of the world. Particularly the British government in this case, because again, the movie is British. Yes, it is British, but with that, it has a very universal feel. I think anyone, no matter what part of the oh, world... Oh, yeah! No, absolutely. Like, there's a lot of elements of this movie where, like, yeah, we're not British, but you can see, and even not just the British specific stuff, but you can just kind of feel like, okay, yeah, this feels very fucking pertinent and to any fucking government and the world's government for just ignoring the climate uh, crisis that is occurring right before our very eyes. Very exa exactly. And also just how history has shown us again and again how a lot of, uh, not everyone, but a, a big group of us usually do follow somewhat blindly and sheep-like and stuff and we do what the government tells us to. Yes. And sometimes, like sometimes you are just a crackpot on the internet, but sometimes, you know, once in a while, some of those crackpots might have a point occasionally not all the time! Sometimes. And one other thing, this movie, and why I was said that this movie specifically is had to be Brit had to be set in Britain and talking about Europe the British fucking uh, country. Uh, because the government for all for people gave they incredibly wealthy, like their their one percent, uh, these little things called the exit. Pills. pills. Die with dignity. And die with dignity, uh, which are cyanide capsules, but, uh, basically. To, uh, wait, to... wait, wait, cyanide capsules. I know, right? I'll talk, I'll... <laughs> I know, right? Um, there's multifacets to this. I thought that when we were Yeah, yeah, it. absolutely. I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute, too, because I was very t intentional with some of the research that the director did for this film. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, these exit, uh, exit capsules, they're cyanide capsules, and they'll give you a peaceful, quiet, uh, quiet death, but they only are given out to the 1%, the incredibly wealthy. And notice how I enunciated the exit Brexit capsules. British. This movie is a commentary and a metaphor for Brexit. Yes. This movie is absolutely like the movie came out at, during the pandemic, but it was filmed quite before. That none of that was ever intended. There was no like anti. This movie is not anti-vax at all. I know some people tried to spin that narrative with the movie. The director and the stars said no, absolutely not. And the film was the movie was made way before fucking uh, uh, before COVID. Um, but what this movie is about is about Brexit and how it basically committed suicide to the entirety of the British Legion. Yeah, yeah, and you can totally get that metaphor under this movie, and it, 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 it even though it doesn't dire uh, directly direct, uh, 
directly address it it yeah. still really does tackle it head on and I, like i said i love how the choices were made there because it never comes across preachy but you still can pick up even dumb yanks can go oh i know what you're talking about movie mm -hmm. yeah. yeah it comes off really well because you'll have them talking about like oh well the the poor and uh, the poor and the homeless don't get it as well the, the disenfranchised as well as immigrants yeah um and this film was written during the syrian refugee crisis the director wrote it during then and then didn't get to film until after that and then it also was written during Brexit. And I don't mean to interrupt no. you, but another thing that reminds that there's a saying that says yeah, it's not bad. It, I'm I'm gonna butcher it. I'm not verbatim, but basically what the saying is is it's not bad people doing bad things. It's good people standing still and not doing anything. It's compliance. And, and yes, yes, compliance. And that's what the, what this feels like. None of these characters are bad in this film. Necessarily, like they yeah. all have their problems. They, they're not But perfect. ostensibly, they're, they're decent enough people. They're decent, caring, loving people, and. Yet, yet they're just they're thinking of their own families, their own comforts and stuff, and uh, b blindly following what the government says. And this one little boy, the, the actor from Jojo Rabbit, goes, "Well, who's where? You know, the, these pills will not be painful. It'll be safe. It'll be there. You know, otherwise you're going to die a horrible death." And he's like, "Well, what about the homeless people? What about the immigrants? They uh, they won't get that pill. They're going to have to die a horrible death. And who's going to be there to comfort them?" Mm -hmm. And that really, like, when it hit and it just hits you, and you go, "My God!" and that that's another thing, like, it's it's good people standing by and doing nothing, well, and I feel that that's a commentary. Well, absolutely, kind of oh, like absolutely. it's an absolutely a commentary, and again, specifically talking about Brexit and the Syrian refugee crisis, because notice, it's the kids saying that. Yes. It's talking, the movie's also and talking, child about, talking about how during that whole thing, you had the older generation of the British people go, being the, because at the end of the day, like, I'm not British, but I'm just gonna say it. it was xenophobia. It was immense fucking amounts of xenophobia and compliance, which is that's how the British Legion has always been. We're the greatest legion, God save the Queen, whatnot. Um, whereas the younger generations during that were like, what the fuck are you doing? These are people, they need fucking help. What are you doing, you sick old bastards? But the kids couldn't do shit because they were uh, they weren't old enough. They had no power. Yeah. Uh, much like with how the movie plays out. But I love the way the movie tackles all this stuff. Again, it never outright comes and says any of this stuff. I only know this because, again, my own personal take, and also through the direct reading the director's uh, interviews and stuff, and talking about it, or talking about how intentional all of this stuff was. But it, 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 I really, really love the way. Like, I love a Candyman 2022, which is just like subtlety is for fucking chumps. Fuck you kind of thing, but I also really do appreciate this form of like subtly getting that idea into people's minds and just like thinking, wait, what was up with that? That this sound, this kind of reminds me a little bit of that. Oh God, was I a horrible person back during that? I appreciate that kind of piece too. I do too. I do too. This movie is so fucking good. And again, and another thing that this tackles on is what the fuck would you do, particularly if you have yeah. children? What do you do? Because you want to always do the best for your most of us, 95% of parents out there, even if we're shit parents, we try the best we fucking can. And until you stand there with a newborn in your arms, you'll never understand. But like you, but so we're, we're not gods. We, we don't know any more than you guys do. We can pretend when you're little, but that's about it. And they're making the best choices. And you, But you're saying they're thinking the world's going to end and they're partying. And it reminded me, before you told me, I thought, kind of like another time in history. Yes, uh, like you said, with the pills basically being fill-ins for cyanide capsules. One thing that the director did research on while she was making the film was she wanted to research and look into how Nazi officers reacted right at the end of World War II when the Allied forces were coming. You know, the Russians, not the Americans, but the Russians, uh, <laughs> were, 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 were invading and, you know, Hitler was about to fucking off cast his, his uh, mortal uh, coil. Yeah, cast off his mortal coil and whatnot. She was doing research into how various Nazi officers reacted to the situation and some they play out with the characters some of them just party some of them quietly uh, quietly just wait for the end some of them fight against it like it's what you can say with anyone but specifically i think it's very pertinent against it given how the pills are very much influenced by cyanide capsules um you know i i found it really interesting when i was reading reading her talk about that like uh, talking about uh, drawing influence from nazi officers at the end of the war well what perfect time to talk about that and again it depends on it's the dylan thomas poem you know 
know, are you going to go uh, goodly into that good night? Or are you going to rage, rage against it? And depending on what kind of person you are, you, you don't really find out until you're put into that situation. Mm -hmm. And, um, but the movie does take some twists. And I kind of, the one thing I will say is I kind of saw the, the very the last shot of the movie. Yeah, I kind of knew it. I knew it. Yeah, I, fucked up thing is I genuinely forgot whether or not what happened at the very, very, like, the last shot of the movie. I forgot whether or not uh, he opened his eyes or not at the very end of the movie. I forgot about that completely. That's why I was being coy with you when you asked me is he going to open his eyes. I actually forgot. And, and he does, and everyone, even people that Everyone's might dead. stay, decide to, they decide, no, it's horrible because, and I, that's one thing about this movie that I really like because they could have taken an easy way up because we have the one Jojo Rabbit kid saying, no, I want to stay, I want to help people, and he sincerely means that, and then he runs away from his father and he sees this car with a baby and these parents and they, took the pills. And, they the, and they died horribly and then reality real and he's just a little kid but reality slaps him in the face and he has a, a breakdown and he's outside and the wind is starting up and his father takes him and then he dies in his parents arms yeah it's, the notes to the parents yeah it, yeah well they're all fucking bickering amongst each other it's really damn good i guess that is one thing i've heard people say against the movie is they feel like the kid it, it talks way too much like an adult a, as opposed to an actual child. I don't really think so I though. He just talks like a very smart ki uh, smart kid. Like he he uses kid metaphors where he was when he's talking about to another character like, "Oh, well, my so my math teacher got something wrong. So what if the one of the scientists got something uh, wrong here, you know?" He, he talks he, yeah, he's definitely being used as a mouthpiece for the director. Everyone in the movie is that's their purpose as actors. But I don't really feel like he's written any different than any uh, than any other kid. He's a smart kid, that's fucking for sure, but I don't think he's written unbelievably. You no, know, I don't either, and that's one thing I always have. Like, there's all different types of kids, but there are some kids that are just way sharper than most of the adults. Look at Hard Candy. I bought that. She was just incredible. Oh, yeah. There are some that are just incredibly bright and incredibly sharp and they're going to catch on a lot quicker than the adults in the room, and I don't think that either. He was believable, and I and, and sometimes it is the kid. Like, like that old, uh, I'm not religious at all, but you know, there's that saying, and a sh child shall lead them. Sometimes you got, and it's, look at the younger generations. I'm not talking about a kid, but look at you young look people. Look at Gen Z, yeah. yeah. with the elections and stuff. It was you guys. You're that, welcome. <laughs> it was your, uh, your generations that got out and maybe helped, you know, not a red the Nazi, way. Keep, uh, keep the Nazis from getting uh, getting into power again. Yes, that's yeah. exactly right. Yeah, so, um, I, so I don't think that, uh, yes, he is being used as a mouthpiece, but he was totally believable. He just thought he was a really smart kid who had a lot of compassion and was thinking not just of himself but of everyone else around him and like and that that line just keeps sticking out to me who's gonna hold their hand when he was talking about the refugees and the immigrants and all of the and other he, people and also talking to like uh, Johnny Depp's daughter who's pr who's pregnant in the movie and I like that character a lot and I really like the turn that the story of her, her and her bro boyfriend goes because her boyfriend's probably the single most likable person in the film but uh, sans the kid like her and her boyfriend are probably the single most likable like there's nothing really wrong with them, but at the very end, right before they're gonna die, her boyfriend fucking gaslights into her into killing herself, which I really like, but they do it in a fucking gorgeous way of, like, them ki uh, passionately kissing each other while they're, they're taking, into the taking, while they're taking the pills. See, I didn't say, think of it as gaslighting because I, the, I, I I do the same thing with Marty. I would tell him the same thing. I won't do it unless you do it. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I would, but I wouldn't want him to suffer, but I wouldn't leave No, him. it's, yeah, it's not exactly like a full-on, like, oh, he has a sudden turn into a gas, gaslight or anything it just it kind of comes off like and maybe it's just because you're in relation a relationship i'm not so i kind of can look at it from that perspective too but like it came off like oh well fucking um, you're gonna you're gonna let you're, the way he delivers the light of oh you're gonna let if you're gonna let your our baby suffer then i'm not then you know blah blah you're gonna let me suffer as well it came off very kind of condescending and dickish which i really like that turn it come it really boils these characters down because when even though we funny since we were talking about Final Destination earlier, but like when death finally is coming for you and you know it's happening, it really boils you down to your fundamentals as a person. Your core, your your actual your core and who you are, and you're not bad or wrong. It's just it's just fight or flight. You're just whatever you do, you do. And again, if this movie really does hold up a mirror to the human experience and how humans are just just as how we are as people, and it's interesting. And people are people are people, and yet they always surprise you, and yet they never 
surprised you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but no, this abs- movie's amazing. This movie's really fucking great, and I, I like, I, 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 this is, and this is a movie like I, it completely went over the radar. Like when we were doing uh, Twelve Days of Christmas last year, this wasn't even on the list. Neither of us knew about the uh, knew about the, uh, this movie, and then I just I can't remember how I stumbled upon it somehow. I think someone uh, someone reviewed uh, did a review of it and said, "Hey, this movie's really fucking cool. People should check it out." And I watched it before end of the year and this movie i think need, more people need to check uh, check out from last year i think it's a really damn good flick yes i do too and i can hear both uh, like i'm definitely in the one camp but i can see arguments going yeah guys that's nice but it's christmas can we just have some fun and, and that's watch fair it? and that's fair and valid too yeah yeah can we just watch a guy's father get a lamp that's fragile can we do that or see a kid that's left home alone can we have some fun yeah, that, that's and valid too it, it totally is it totally is but one thing I like about this movie is it does make you go, remind yourself that yes, and we, you shouldn't wallow in just the miseries of the world no. or you're gonna go fucking crazy. But it does remind you, you know what? When you're worrying about oh, I I'm not gonna get that Apple phone till January or you know something like that. Think about someone else's maybe burying a kid or you know some other big disaster that happens. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, that stuff doesn't matter. And I does that sound preachy? I don't want to sound fucking. No, homo. I just feel like it's also kind of the mood we're in you know again we're filming this in november and you know we're coming right off of thanksgiving after the fucking uh, colorado shooting and yes. hearing all the stories of like that and walmart uh, yeah and the walmart shooting and hearing those stories of, of those families having to fucking grieve the loss of their fucking children because of fucking psychos yes um, they, uh, families had to gather at that at, at that club for thanksgiving to be, grieve together to which grieve was together, beautiful which... but something that never should have happened yeah yeah whenever i think about it i kind of start to tear up again and then you think of those people in Walmart, there were people that their chairs were missing, you know, from the table. They yeah. weren't sitting there, and it's horrible. So, like, at the end of the day, all this stuff, it, it's important. We're all shallow materialistic people, but on your deathbed, you're not, you're gonna be thinking about the people that love, because at the end of the day, that's all that matters. Mm-hmm. And this movie really put in something to me, and it'll, it, it, hopefully it'll make you go, I can be a better person. Yeah, Even yeah. if you're a good person, we can always do better. Yeah. Every one of us can. Yeah, yeah so, no, absolutely. This, yeah, just speaks for the movie. I love this. I am glad we did this one first because I don't want any yeah, more of these this feelings. Is the fir- this is the first Get one we're, away. This is the first one we're filming and this is the first video coming out. Uh, do not worry. Every other movie sends one of them. <laughs> but that's dark in a different way. That's uh, a gin dark. But every other movie we're doing for the uh, for the next batch of videos are not nearly as dark and grim. Most of them are just fun slasher movies and Christmas horror, general Christmas horror. Or a giant cookie. Yeah, Killer or, cookie. Or the return of a giant killer cookie. Um, God damn yeah, you So all. don't worry about that. Um, or slight twists on it, which we'll, you'll hear about more tomorrow. Um, but no, like, don't worry about it. This movie, this is the darkest we're going to get and the serious we're going to get for the or for the rest of December. Don't worry about it. This is not going to be... Minus one other This film. is not going to be the norm <laughs> for these videos. No, we do... We, we, may be de- we may be depressed and it's December, but we're not going to fucking... Sp- we're, not, we're not doing this for the entire month. No, we we do want to have some fun, but we just want to remind you, you know, at the end of the day, this is the holidays. Just, just, just think, you know, your kids are okay. The people you you're with, the people you love, they come home to your dinner table at night. You have a roof over your head. Then it's okay, even if you're going through things. There's things to be blessful, that thankful about. So mm-hmm. yeah. no, no matter what your personal viewpoint on religion or anything else, just make yeah, it all. No, it's a universal. It thing. always it, it it never does wrong to be the hand that reaches out. It never yes. does wrong. Yes, and if you think you see somebody who's hurt. And maybe say, come on over, or hang out, or you want to watch a movie, or just even. I think sometimes it's just nice to go. What well, I care, I give a shit about you. You yeah. matter. So tell someone you they matter. Yeah. So and don't just use it for sex, although that's great too. That is Holiday awesome. sex, uh, party. Yeah. Yes, yes. To go back to uh, standard pervy, uh, pervy thing. You can reach out to them through fucking them. That, yes, that, 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 your that, legs can open as wide as your heart. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Feliz Navidad. And on that thing, that 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 is what concludes our first uh, twelve days of Cryptmas on Jen's reviews for the grave. We hope you come back. We promise we're not gonna be so deep and emo and introspective. We're just gonna be horny uh, Christmas holiday. Per- Gonna, well, I will be. Well, that, and we're just going to be really cold because it's winter. And uh, something that I don't think enough people talk about is winter horror. There's a lot of winter horror movies out there. So maybe we might talk about some of those possibly tomorrow. Possibly, possibly. We can't always have.
have tinsels and bubble mm. lights. I want my fucking bubble lights. Oh, do you like our tree, by the way? We were going to spray paint it black, but we ran out of time, even though we're filming these videos early, but we still ran out of time. We, we yeah, missed it. looks pretty cool. I'm uh, pretty happy with it. But with all that said, and we're going to say that we're going to close out all these videos the same way. Happy holidays. Be sure to open your hearts a little wider. Be sure to open your legs a little wider. Get big but things of Viagra. Go what we donate to a church. Give you know, do a donate, good thing. Don't donate to a church. <laughs> donate to a good charity. The church don't need no fucking money. You know, go donate go, to a homeless shelter. Donate to a food bank. What I'm saying is go help out like Fuck the church. Go, go feed someone homeless. Go give go go give toys to a needy family and then come home with your significant other or others. We don't judge. Polyamorous relationships are fine as long as everyone's okay with it. Wrap yourselves in tinsels, have an orgy, have a bang with someone you love, and just open your hearts and your legs as wide as possible, and let's spread the love any way we can in this dark, dark world. Yes. Merry Christmas! Feliz Navidad, everyone. <laughs> Feliz Navidad. And with that, as always, thank you guys for watching. Happy holidays. We hope you come back tomorrow, and in the meantime, keep talking and watching horror, and again, be sure to open your hearts and your legs as wide as you can and this holiday the church. season. Yes, and fuck the church. And with all that out of the way, we'll talk to you tomorrow. Happy holidays, everyone. We love you. We love you, even though we are. It's even though it's depressed December. We do love you. <laughs> yeah. Bye, guys. Cheers.